I'm coming. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, you never know what you'll find in the scafetta when you hear that bell tolling. All you know for certain is that a desperate mother has had to abandon her baby and that God guided them here. Poor little bambino. Oh. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, see. Bambino. Oh. Oh, correction, Bambina. <laughs> uh, before they built the Ospedale de la Pieta, the canals were filled with dead babies. That was four centuries ago. But now, on rainy nights in Venice, we can still hear the little ghosts crying. Uh, you are safe here, cara Bambina. And this is so much better than being thrown into a canal like garbage, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> you are so quiet. Are you alive? Sometimes they're not. I never know what I'll find when I come to the niche in the wall and pull open the heavy stone drawer. It's not always a joyous occasion. <laughs> Let's take a look at you. Ah. Ten fingers, yes. Ten toes, good. <laughs> Why were you left here, little one? Oh, perhaps your mama is a cheating noblewoman who must hide her indiscretion. Or oh, a flower seller who can't afford another addition to the family. Well, you're not dressed in velvets and lace, but not rags either. Ah, I detect perfume. Uh, perhaps your mama is a courtesan from this city, and babies are a burden to them. Of course, the gondoliers are sworn to secrecy. They never tell, never. Aha! Uh -huh. Half a tarot card. This is good. It means your mama hopes that her circumstances will change. With luck and God's will, she will come back with her half of the card someday and claim you. For now, we will make sure that the baby is healthy and send her off to a wet nurse. And if the mother doesn't return, since the baby's a girl, there's a chance she might find a home here in the famous Coro with the other unwanted but talented girls. <laughs> or perhaps playing an instrument, that is also good. <laughs> If you're not selected for the choir, maybe you will become a girl who works in the laundry or a maid or a lace maker. Or you could possibly work in the bakery and grow plump. <laughs> Sneaking bits of biscotti. <laughs> you have been saved for something. Uh, what that something is, and no one knows. Your mama put you in the scafetta so you could become something. And what you will become is God's will. <laughs> I must hurry now and find the scribes. It is time for them to do their work. And you, Cara Bambina, will be grateful for it someday. Everything about this night will be recorded in a book, then locked away with your half of the tarot card for safekeeping. <laughs> a baby! We've got another! Find the Scrivani. We've got a live one. It's a girl. It's a girl, praise God.
it's another new score by Maestro Vivaldi. <laughs> Sometimes he composes two a week. Can you imagine? Masses, oratorios, motets, the music of heaven. So many notes to learn. Him the Red Priest. Did you know that Maestro is a priest? He is, sort of. I'll tell you what I heard. The night he was born, he was so small and sickly, he almost died. The midwife had to baptize him herself. Uh, Dios mío, it was like an emergency baptism. It's allowed in extreme situations. Of course, later they had him baptized for real, but that night, right there in the birthing bed, his mama promised God that if her baby lived, she'd make sure he became a priest. And so he did. But there was a problem. After just one year, they wouldn't let him say mass anymore. It's polite to say it was because of his asthma. But really, it's because he couldn't stop composing. Right in the middle of mass, if he got an idea about music, he would rush out to his desk and start scribbling. He just left all of the people sitting there. They fidget and cough, waiting for someone to come and finish the mass. Oh, you should see the maestro when he composes. It's really something. He runs his fingers through his hair, and he weeps and rocks back and forth. And he hums. He hums and talks to himself. Then he jabs his quill pen into the inkwell and scribbles fast and messy. <laughs> it's a good thing for him that he got a job working here at the Pieta. Not only do the Filet de Coro, daughters of the choir, like me, sing his music, but those of us with beautiful handwriting copy over his notes for him. Of course, the Ospedali benefits too, believe me. Don Vivaldi's glorious music draws huge crowds who pay good money to hear us sing. His father taught the maestro to play the violin. They're rarely apart. When the maestro's father isn't playing in the orchestra at the Basilica de San Marco, he looks out for his son, manages the business end of things, attends him when he's sick. Some say that when the father dies, the maestro will die soon after. It must be so wonderful to have a father, a mother, someone who loves you. I wouldn't know. My mother died giving birth to me, and I was told it was my father who placed me in the stone drawer. Maybe he hoped to come back for me, but he fell off some scaffolding and died. None of us here have family names. Instead, we are given names as if we were God's own musical instruments. I'm blessed with a high voice, so I'm called Paola del Soprano, and this is my best friend, Bianca del Contralto. And in the orchestra, we have Maria del Violin e Celestina del Oboe. I have a wonderful life full of music. For the maestro's rehearsal. I don't dare be late. His hair practically stands on end when we're late, like those paintings of the flames of hell. But really, God is great to have brought me here, and the maestro is great, and the choral. Oh, and the audience is great too. <laughs> Adio.
Well, the English, of course. All right. Well, other than the English, I will ask again. Who doesn't love Venezia? Oh, six months of carnival. Our masks are almost as famous as our canals. Hmm? Behind the mask, we have freedom and mystery. Anyone could be behind the mask. Mm -hmm. A king, uh, a duke, the doge himself, uh, a priest, or a famous musician. Perhaps the handsome Scarlatti, whose cheekbones are as chiseled as handles are pudgy and padded. Hmm. Behind the mask, who can tell, right? <laughs> oh, Alexia, it is a city of illusion. They say it floats. Illusion, illusion. This is a city that has stone cathedrals, cobblestone streets, and buildings made from pink and gray marble. Once all of this was a lagoon, but hundreds of years ago they pounded a foundation of wooden logs into the mud, and ever since, Venice has been securely anchored. Oh, Venetians are rich and sophisticated. Another illusion. We hide the poor in the Ospedali and the Jews in the ghetto, and the Jews have a curfew besides. We Venetians all look rich. We dress all in black, which is the color of power and sophistication. We can tell the tourists by their bright colors. Oh, I see you, yes. <laughs> At night, we drift along the canals in gondolas, at our reflections by the light of a thousand lanterns. Ah, it's almost impossible to tell a noblewoman from a courtesan. Mm -hmm. And the handsome gondoliers in their billowing shirts, oh, they pretend not to see where our hands go or <laughs> what our lips do. More illusion. And the girls at the coro in the pieta, Oh, some say they're angels. They certainly sound like angels, and we, we pay good money to hear them sing, but they are hidden behind a lattice. It's quite titillating. Oh, yes, we never see the girls. Oh, oh, except for when they are very, very young and not yet developed, and they go through the streets singing psalms with red robes, red for charity and compassion. They need both, and we give it to them, yes? We fill their alms baskets as they pass by in the streets, yes. Oh, who could resist? <laughs> oh, but the girls at the Pieta, they are always hidden. We hear their heavenly voices and curious. We, we peer through the lattice to see what we can see, and we can just make out that they wear bright red pomegranate flowers in their hair. Pomegranates, it's interesting, isn't it? That is the fruit that the baby Jesus holds in the paintings of Botticelli and Leonardo da Vinci. It is uh, symbolizing his impending death and resurrection. Yes, oh, but according to legend, it is also the fruit of fertility that Eve used to tempt Adam. <laughs> oh, in some imagined future, in a city far greater than Venice, a choir of women might wear black. <laughs> but in my time, the filie di coro wear long white robes, white for virginity. <laughs> I say it's all illusion, delicious, <laughs> oh, holy, mm, naughty, divine illusion. Oh, hello.
Teresa, Cecilia, ah, Paola, Paola, oh, oh. Paola, eh. Cecilia, Paola, and eh. oh, hello again. Have you been enjoying the music of our dear Maestro Vivaldi? <laughs> Celestial, don't you agree? Yes. See, I've just come back from escorting some of the filet, the coro, to the uh, oh, palatorio. Such a beautiful room with its high vaulted ceiling. On special days, the fortunate girls get to receive visitors there. <laughs> well, the unlucky girls who don't have family must uh, keep occupied upstairs. They must study and, and, and pray and, and uh, copy out music for the maestro. They can also rest, but resting when others are receiving visitors, uh, I don't recommend it makes you most melancholy. Ah, geek, geek. Ah, geek. Grazie, grazie. Oh, oh. We made quite an entrance descending the grandest staircase. You could feel the excitement as the girls peered and passed through the lacy metal grill to greet their visitors. For just that brief time, they could be seen. Seen, not touched, of course. But still, to be seen after being hidden away, well, it's a feeling of freedom. <laughs> These girls have quite a life here. It's hard for them to be cloistered, to be hidden away. They wonder about their mothers. They peer through the grill, looking at the backs of the audience below, oh, eyeing the elegant ladies draped in jewels and the artfully groomed gentlemen it's easy to spot princes and kings. The doge himself takes a break from governing Venezia every now and then and arrives with great pomp. The, the young singers are nervous about seeing life outside our cloistered walls. I don't blame them. I grew up here at the Pieta. You see, see? <laughs> I was once like they are now, wandering, eager to see past the confines of the Ospedali, but no more. I am grateful to be here mm -hmm. ah, and to serve the girls, God, and to live my life in a space filled with music. Mm. I am content. <laughs>
about virgins. I don't think he's well. He yelled and coughed and swore and coughed some more. It's a good thing the censor didn't hear him or the prior rat. <laughs> Dio mio. We all adore him, no matter what they say. We want to please him, and we don't want him to get in any more trouble. He breaks the rules and uses bad words, and there are whispers of scandal and bad behavior, which I do not believe. Mostly. Even with the rumors, the board keeps him on. Well, almost always. So far, when he's been dismissed, he's been allowed back. They call him eccentric and object that he breaks the rules, but he's a big money maker for the Ospedali, and the board knows it. People come to hear us perform his glorious, sacred music. People with money to spend. Audience members and patrons. He fawns over them, and they give a little. He plays his violin, they give even more. They hear us sing, and they empty their pockets in person. Good thing, too, because it takes a lot of money to maintain the four ospedale. Uh, the coral is in the one for the foundlings. There's another building for the orphans and one for the homeless. The saddest is the ospedale del incurabile, for those sick with syphilis and bubonic plague. One way or another, Venice takes care of its poor and abandoned. We're fed. Housed, clothed, educated. Some say it's only to keep us out of sight. Tourists don't want to see a lot of beggars and sick people. They want beauty when they visit. They want silver butterfly masks and masquerades and music. Venetians and visitors all love the opera. Oh, the maestro doesn't just write celestial sacred music for us. He writes operas too. A priest. Who writes operas? It's practically a scandal all by itself. I've heard that the opera house is a world filled with naughty people, on stage and off. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> We're not allowed to go there. Maestro Vivaldi is like a three-legged stool. One leg is on the dry land of the priesthood, Another is on the bobbing gondola of the opera. And the third is here, in the world of the Ospedale. <laughs> Dios mio, the maestro doesn't really have three legs. But he might have more than ten fingers. No, really, that's what everyone thinks when they hear him play the violin. No one else on earth can play arpeggios like he does. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm to return for <laughs> I hope it goes better. I hate it when he shouts, Silenzio! It's enough to chill you to the bone, even on the hottest day. I hope I get the notes right this time. I hope he stops yelling at us. Pray for us, the filie de coro, and for our beloved maestro, pray hard. Grazie, ciao!
your cafes and cathedrals, but most of all, I love your music. Oh, 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 I was in the audience at the cathedral um, when George Friedrich Handel's Agrippina premiered at the Opera House a couple of years ago, yes. At the end, we all cried out in one voice, Vivi il caro sassone! Long live our dear Saxon! <laughs> Oh, the Opera House is magnificent, if messy. The men, they like to gamble and spit. Everyone stomps and shouts. <laughs> Fortunately, I always have a seat in one of the boxes above the fray. If the men in the audience appreciate the prima donna, they might uh, shower her with flowers and love notes. But if they don't, they Throw orange peels. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> but to be truly transported, we head to the Pieta to hear the heavenly voices of the mysterious girls. One hundred filiae filling three balconies. Oh, it's quite something, yes? Oh, an all-female choir. An all-female orchestra. Unheard of. Unheard of as well. The instruments that they play, the harpsichord, the bassoon, and the trumpets. All of it a novelty. Hmm? Only in Venezia will you hear string, brass, and wind instruments played together. Only in Venezia. Oh, oh, and Vivaldi. Oh, that divine man, he does it all. He plays, uh, instructs, conducts. He, he creates sacred masses and secular operas. He does it all. You know what, it's all here. The pageantry of life, the endless garden parties and balls. We float from one palazzo to the next, uh, from one dress fitting to the next, uh, forced to decide which silks, which satins, which velvets. Display my breasts or keep them covered. Decisions, decisions. Hmm. Ah, oh, we all play our parts, yes, but return time and again to be transported by these heavenly voices, wondrous rapture. 
And how lucky are we to be here tonight in this place. carnival for me, I'm afraid. I had invaded my dreams as well. Seems I've been dreaming too. Am I still? Where are we? Well, now I remember. You were there, and you. And you. And you were there too. I I in my dream, I traveled through time. Yes. Yes. And some of it was terrible. The maestro died soon after his father, just as everyone predicted he would. He was alone and penniless at the end and buried in a pauper's grave. It is too terrible. I can't bear to think about it. Oh, it got worse. 
A few decades later, a conqueror named Napoleon came with his army and destroyed much of the Venice we loved so well. Yes, well, really, Napoleon and his men just walked in and claimed it. We Venetians, we're not warriors. We're lovers and artists, musicians, priests, and partiers. The battle was over before it began. And our dear Vivaldi was forgotten his music divided up and locked away for 200 long years. Yes, until the 1930s, huh? uh, oh, when scholars who were researching a composer named uh, Bach, oh. yes, they found references to the influence of a Don Vivaldi. Oh. Who was this Vivaldi, they wondered. And then, in the 1960s, our dear maestro was rediscovered, and his music became even more popular than when he was alive, imagine. And now his music is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But the musicians of today are magical little fairy people. They fit inside tiny glass boxes and are carried about in people's pockets and purses. And... They play on tiny fairy instruments. Yes, 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 I know, it's hard to believe. I realize, but it is absolutely true, and I can prove it. Mm -hmm. I have secured one of these magic boxes. <laughs> yes, yes, shh. Now, listen, uh, the tiny fairy orchestra will begin playing when I press this button here to alert them. Shh, 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 listen. <clears throat> Yes? Oh, that's magical! Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Can well, you imagine how, how no, tiny their scores must be? I wonder how the little musicians... How do the little musicians eat? Oh, tiny I meals. Yes, they're tiny. Where'd you get that box? <laughs> I want to get one of those boxes. You should get one of those boxes. I'm going to get one. And then you can get a nice box. 